sightseeing, cultural delicacies, and scenic views of Lake Victoria. These are just some of the unforgettable things that attract many to the lakeside city of Kisumu. However, in the last three months, the picturesque shoreline of the world's second largest freshwater lake has once again been replaced by this. As far as the eye can see, a floating green mass slowly colonizing the entire gulf. And what began as a recurrence of the dreaded hyacinth problem has now evolved into a blooming of different kinds of parasitic vegetation, all keen to stake their claim on the lake. Once the water is in the camps and feels in the place, the hippograss starts moving into the water hygiene as a parasite. So it floats, it, the water hygiene is a uh, Food. Studies show the regeneration of the hyacinth and the blooming of napier and hippograsses are in fact man-made. According to Dr. Okurut, pollutants like fertilizer are entering the lake from rivers originating as far as the Mao forest. Couple that with uncontrollable winds towards the Gulf, government decision in the 1980s to construct a wall in the lake in the form of the Mbita Causeway, and what you have is a vegetation disaster. The need to open the bitter cross so that the exchange of water from the main lake uh, with the net of Winam Gap is enhanced. However, the speed with which the weeds now regenerate is a wiring trend. What was originally a controllable problem continues to spell doom for many stakeholders. Fishing, tourists and transport vessels remain grounded, business literally coming to a standstill. We import fish as far as from Busia right now. Yes. yes. And uh, the price of fish has increased. You find that we used to buy fish at 300 shillings, big size. But now they are ranging between 5 shilling, 500 shillings to 600 shillings. That the women they have gone because there is no fish. The people inside the fish market, they have gone, there is no fish. With not only the livelihoods of thousands at stake, the ecological balance of Lake Victoria has also raised questions. Once there's no oxygen, tilapia can't live there. Experts say previous control methods for the hyacinth, such as weevils and human removal, are now grossly insufficient. And though there is criticism on some of the bodies charged with the mandate of dealing with the menace, the finger is still squarely pointed at the government.